In this video, we are going to derive the periodic function tangent and its reciprocal function cotangent. We are also going to compare and contrast tangent and cotangent to the other six periodic functions, sine and cosine, and their reciprocal functions, cosecant and secant, respectively. So it is helpful if you happen to have our table from the module one video in notes or any unit circle in front of you because what you can then do is you can go through the radians um, of and check out what tangent values are according to that. So let's start off with um, zero radians. At zero radians the y value is going to be zero and the x value is one. Tangent is the relationship of y over x so it's probably helpful to have that here and therefore 0 divided by 1 is 0. At pi over 4 the value of x and y is square root of 2 over 2 so the tangent at pi over 4 is 1 and at pi over 2 the y value is 1 and the x value is 0 but if you have a 1 for the y and a 0 for the x then that's undefined and like in the previous video we used a vertical line, probably if you're doing it, you should use a light stroke or a dotted line to show an asymptote line because we cannot actually have one divided by zero. Now, if we go to three pi over four, because each gap of this problem is going in this way, what we have is a negative square root of two over two for x and a positive square root of two over two for y. Negative divided by positive is negative one. Because one's negative, one's positive, anything divided by itself is one. But in this case, since one was negative, it's a negative one. Now we're gonna go to pi. At pi, the y value is zero and the x value is negative one. Well, zero divided by negative one is zero. Now we go to 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, okay. So 5 pi over 4, we uh, see that we now have two negative square root of 2 over 2's, and t negative square root of 2 divided by negative square root of 2 is positive 1. And then at our, let's see, this is pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 at 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, we have another situation where our x is zero and our y is negative one. Well, negative one divided by zero is undefined. So then we get to seven pi over four and we have another square root of two over square root of two situation except that the y is negative in the fourth quadrant. So that would give me a negative one. And then we're back again at the origin sorry, not the origin, at 2 pi, which is the same as 0 degrees. So this curve line up is my tangent wave. And I'm going to bend this with, you know, the curvy line down. Sorry, I missed my dot there a little bit. I'll do a little bit better here, just a little bit. So curvy line down from this pi and curvy line up, this is our tangent wave as well. And then here from, I'll make a curvy line down. This is, and again, I missed my dot, sorry about that. But this is two periods of the tangent function. So normally we expect, since we've been practicing a lot with sine, cosine, and all the reciprocals of sine and cosine, you'll notice that this is going to be one period length of our tangent function. And tangent repeats every pi. Unlike sine and cosine and those reciprocals, tangent repeats every pi. The period is half as long as what you normally have been drawing. So if we were to take this picture and do the inverse of this picture, every single zero of our blue tangent wave would become an asymptote line. So let's draw asymptote lines wherever this crossed, the blue line crossed the x-axis. So you can see that happened at 0, π, 
pi and 2 pi. should probably put that there. Then this happens here at 0 pi and 2 pi. Now, this reciprocal of 1, since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, that reciprocal of 1 is 1. That reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. And that happens the same over here. At 5 pi over 4, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. At 7 pi over 4, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. And you can see that putting square root of 2 over square root of 2 is still 1. Double negatives make 1, and 1 negatives make negative 1. What about the reciprocal of this asymptote line? Remember, the asymptote line here was created because we had 1 over 0. Now, over here, we have 0 over 1. So here, I'm going to put my blue dot right there. And also, this reciprocal is now going to be 0 here as well. So here's this opening up. And here's this opening down. That could be a little bit more curvy. I apologize about that. This is opening up as well. And this is opening down here. So this is our tangent, and this is our cotangent. So you'll see that I've actually written very emphatically, the first gap in period is not the same as the other four trigonometric functions. You can see that the gap here is pi over 4, and the period here is pi. Now let's mark our asymptote lines. This is x equals pi over 2. And this is x equals 3 pi over 2. This is x equals pi. Sorry, x equals 0, excuse me. This is x equals pi. I was looking ahead. And this is x equals 2 pi. So let's talk about domain. Now in the previous video, we are not going to use interval notation for domain. We're going to use our set notation. Now, a lot of books don't even bother with the set notation. They just use something called inequalities or, you know, describe using inequalities. So I like to do this in the set notation because, again, some books do that. And this is where x can't be 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. So this is, again, our k pi over 2. This seems kind of familiar, right? I think we, you know, we, we had that in our... Uh, previous waves when we were looking at um, the secant waves. And, and k can't be odd. k is odd. And again, I'm not really having to specify odd integers. I'm just going to say k is odd, because when you think of an odd number, you think 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And you can think of negative odd numbers too, negative 1, negative 3, negative 5. And you can see the pattern will exist. Now for the domain here, I'm going to have x knocking on the door, and x is not going to be equal to 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi. So again, it's k pi, and k is an integer. Now, I'm going to use a little shortcut. I'm going to say k, and this is a little, a little e here. It's a c with a line through it. This means k belongs to, and then I'm going to write a z. I'm going to put an extra line in the z, because this indicates this is the mathematical shortcut for writing the set of integers which is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. k belongs to the set of integers. Now you can write out k is an integer, but I'm going to be a little lazy and just do that. Now you know what's great about the range? The range of a tangent line goes up infinitely and also can go down infinitely. So the range is going to be like the z with a line through it. This is an r with a line through it that means real. The range is real. And we can also write that in interval notation very easily from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range of cotangent is also the same thing. There's the set, and here's the interval. We can get fancier with the set. We can say that um, that the y belongs to the, uh, like y is an element of real, but again, this conveys the information pretty nicely. So before we end this video, you have just been introduced to tangent and cotangent. And again, I will say very slowly and emphatically, the period of tangent and cotangent is not 2 pi. The period is pi. You can see very clearly in the cotangent wave picture here that it repeats every pi. It's a little bit harder to see it in the tangent picture, but if I highlighted 
basically everything from here to pi and fill this in, okay? It repeats in this green section here. So you can see that the green and yellow are exactly the same line in a different shifted place along the x-axis. See, so you have the swoop, asymptote, comes from the bottom. Swoop, asymptote, comes from the bottom. And cotangent is extremely easy to see. So what I have at the bottom of this worksheet here is I have a chart and also the the the, the official uh, basically explanation or discussion of the periodic functions of these six trigonometric um, six trigonometric periodic um, functions here. We are now going to take a look at these periodic properties. So sine. If I take sine of theta and add 2 pi to that, to that theta, I'm going to get right back to where I started at, at sine of theta. Cosine, same idea. If I have cosine theta, or t as some books use, and I add 2 pi to that radian t or theta, that'll take me right back to cosine theta. It's not the same thing for tangent. Tangent values repeat every pi, not 2 pi. And this is very easy if you take a look at 45 degrees, which has a tangent value of 1. Then you go past 180 degrees to 225 degrees. That also has a tangent value of 1. So there's repetition in the first and third quadrant, exactly pi units away from uh, its original tangent of theta. Now the reciprocal functions are the same for cosecant and secant to so their reciprocals here. The cosecant of theta plus 2 pi is the same thing as the cosecant of theta. The secant of theta plus 2 pi is the same thing as secant. The cotangent of theta plus pi is equal to the cotangent theta. So cannot emphasize this enough. Tangent and cotangent repeat every pi. They do not repeat every 2 pi like everything that we've seen before them. So let's make this chart. And these, this chart here is going to see the basic, basic patterns and properties of these functions. So here we're going to have the sine of theta, and we'll use t here like some of our books use. Here's cosine of t. Here's secant of t. Here's cosecant of t. Here's tangent t and cotangent t. Now the period of sine and cosine is 2 pi. The gap, which is the first tick mark we will use since we're dividing our um, two periods by eight tick marks, will be pi over 2. The domain of both of these are real, and the range is going to go from negative 1 to 1. Now, secant. Secant is the reciprocal function of cosine. The period and the gap is going to be exactly the same. The domain is not going to be all real numbers. The domain is that interval where x cannot be equal to k pi over 2. And k is going to be odd here. Our range is going to be from negative infinity to negative 1, bracket, union, bracket, 1 to infinity. Okay, so now we're going to look at cosecant, which is a reciprocal of sine. Again, 2 pi, pi over 2. 
In this case, if we look at the cosecant, the cosecant x cannot be k pi, and k is an integer. That's a z with an extra line by it, which is doesn't it's not a two. It's a z with a line by it. Um, and then we are going to have our same range of our basic function here. Basic cosecant function. Now it's time to talk about tangent. The tangent is a period of pi. The gap is pi over 4 because we're taking our uh, graph and making it into 8 tick marks. Our domain is going to be x cannot be equal to k pi over 2 odd again, just like our secant. And our range is real. And then finally, our cotangent, pi period, gap pi over 4. Our domain is going to be x cannot be equal to k pi. And k belongs to the integers. Range is real. OK. So in this quick little table here, you can kind of see the connections between the parent function and its reciprocal. And you can also see some similarities. And it's nice having this in front of you. But as you see in the next video, as we start to do our graphing of these functions, um, sometimes having this in front of you is useful. And other times, you just have to go by what's in front of you on the page. So thank you for watching, and in the next series of videos, we're going to start off with amplitude, and we're going to go to other, um, other modifiers on period, on vertical shift, and then finally the phase shift.